Let's talk to Rupert Bell because I've got some bad news for those of you who are big fans of Harry and Meghan. I'm afraid uh, the Spotify podcast has been dropped after just one series. Rupert will tell us why. Rupert, very good morning to you. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Mike. I knew this would be meat and drink to you. Listen, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't wish to in any way, um, you know, gloat over um, the failure of a podcast uh, to make a uh, breakthrough into society because I do have a podcast of my own which does rather well. Um, but it looks like uh, Netflix have seen the light, as we said they would. Well, Spotify have seen the light, um, and uh, because obviously they signed this multi-million pound deal. Well, I think with... Netflix will be next. Well, uh, there is a possibility. Can't uh, clearly there are issues going on there because Netflix have got financial problems, and obviously this was a high-profile deal for them after their six-part series. Where are they going to go next? But in terms of Spotify, this is after this uh, the podcast series, which could have been good. And the reason I say it could have been good, her guess this wasn't bad. But trouble is, she made it all about herself. Now. To get Serena Williams as your opening gambit, and I'm a tennis fan, uh, she could have basically got the interview of all interviews with Serena Williams, mm. just talking about her career, her life from the get-go, about how hard it was, striving, and, and just talking about some of her great matches, just her life, which I think would have broadened the, the reach rather than the ending up becoming a little bit sort of self-indulgent, mm. as a lot of them were. and. Podcasts, as we know, is a very competitive industry. Every company thinks, oh, we must do a podcast. We, This is the new thing. Right. Well, it's not that easy to break through and find an audience. And that, yes, they had the pulling power in terms of the name, but if the content isn't up to good and can actually reach out to a wider and engaging the audience, and if it's just a sort of bit of a, a sort of internal sort of pat on the back, then the, the public aren't going to buy it. And that was my perception of it. I'm sure there was people, and I know there were people who I'm sure enjoyed it. But it's got to have a wider reach. And the problem for them also, Mike, is what are they going to do next? Mm. Uh, how do they make another interesting series in their minds that actually will engage the public after what has been a difficult few months for them in terms of people getting slightly bored with their shtick. Well, I can help you with uh, what's going to come next because the Wall Street Journal have quoted an Archie Wells spokeswoman as saying that Meghan was, in their words, continuing to develop more content for the archetype's audience on another platform. Well, yes, but you've got to develop something that is going Maybe Talk to... Sport could put one out for her. <laughs> well... Maybe they could, but she's got to put something out that actually we want. And we know how hard it is to um, make a podcast that is interesting. Yes, you can say it's something Meghan Markle's doing. Look, Sarah Ferguson's just done one, and I listened to that, and you go, well, it might have been interesting, but again, it didn't. It, may, it seemed to be just a bit insular. Right. And it's very hard to come up with something that is engaging and you know, you know, it is difficult, and that's what they've got. You can't just say, I'm um, Harry, Harry and Meghan, yes, I can put anything out and people will buy into it. That doesn't work for them anymore, and particularly from a commercial background, the, the Spotify, Netflix, they will want to see a return on the investment. And Spotify got themselves into a bit of a pickle by doing all these high-profile celebrity mm. deals, and then they found themselves a bit short of cash because the audience and the advertising revenue didn't match the, the level of expectation of their, their chief executive. Well, exactly right, because according to a piece I'm reading here, the contract was estimated to be worth about $25 million. Now, I don't know whether that's true. Seems like an awfully large amount of money to pay somebody for a first series of a podcast you don't know is going to work. So I wonder whether those figures have been a bit massaged, to be honest. But certainly the suggestion is that they haven't made any money. Uh, I don't think they would have done. And yet, I think... Those figures may not be too far off the part, point because he did go. They did go for some big deals, thinking that they could. Uh, and, and the chief executive admitted uh, he got a bit carried away with some of the deals that he made. Yeah. So at the well, end that's of the basically day, two million dollars per podcast. You know, I mean, call me old-fashioned, but that does seem a bit of an expensive price to pay. Yeah, and it, it wouldn't. And of course, she said that she was working all night, sort of being creative. Well. Basically, if you're just interviewing someone, the research is you do some research on your subject. And my idea is, and what should be important, if she was the host, yes, she is the name to draw them in. But what she should have been seeing is, right, how do I get the best out of my guests? Mm. It's not about me. 
It's about the guest. Isn't that the art of being a good interviewer in a sense? Well, I mean, you this, want is exactly your subject... what, this is exactly what I'm doing now, Rupert. I'm getting the best out of you and I'm letting you speak, you know, instead of interrupting you all the time, which is what she would do. Because, I mean, she's the archetype, if you'll pardon the pun, of the person who says, anyway, that's enough about me. What do you think of me? Uh, there is an element of that, uh, and there was an element of that in, in the podcast. Look, there would have been people who want to hear. Now, where does she go from here? Maybe she's going to be going back to doing the influencer stuff that she was doing before she met Harry mm. uh, and was very successful. That does not, you know, she got lots of hits and views. So she's a commercial proposition as far as that is concerned. So there will be scope, and I'm sure her new agency are looking to leverage her in any which way they can. But this clearly is a setback for them. The Netflix one is interesting. What will they do with the Invictus series? When will that come out? Because that actually is something that I think is interesting. But it is a, is it mass market stuff? Mm. Well, yes, well, we all... I was going to ask, do you remember a couple of weeks ago, or slightly less perhaps, The Sun put on their front page that, that basically Harry and Meghan were going to stop all of their sort of Netflix deals, their Spotify deals, they weren't going to write any more books, and the word was that basically they'd, they'd run out of things to say. They didn't think they had anything else they could say. But I wonder how much of that was a kind of uh, getting out ahead of this decision, because it was supposedly a joint decision that was taken uh, between Spotify and uh, Harry and Meghan. But in fact, I wonder whether they wanted to get out in front and say, oh, we're not going to do it anymore before they got fired. Uh, I think there's an element where what else have they got to say? Hmm. Uh, or certainly Harry, because we haven't. <clears throat> Clearly, the Netflix documentary was their story. She said, you want to hear the story from us. Where do they go now? Because I think there has been basically Harry and Meghan fatigue mm. in terms of their, you know, their story. And when, you know, just as we all know, there's people have got far more difficult things to worry about, probably just actually worrying about what they're going to eat tomorrow, yeah. let alone, you know, someone who's living in a highly um, expensive area of, um, of, of California mm. uh, and without any real troubles in the world. So this is the interesting thing. They now say they're going to make help create new programming films and, and produce product project. But that, too, is difficult. Look at all the other, you know, Netflix have been cancelling series left, right, and drama series left, right, and centre. It's not easy to come up with con content that actually um, is, is interesting. It's all right. Just because you're Harry and Meghan doesn't mean you're suddenly no. going to make a good programme, as it's, this podcast it's, proves. It's one of those things, Rupert, as well. I speak to more and more people who are sort of, you know, so we say reassessing their household expenses and one of the first things that they're losing is a subscription to something like netflix or a subscription to some podcast on spotify because those things can be can be you know done away with and you don't really your life doesn't really change no and if you think about it you know for everyone you, you can have a sky subscription you netflix disney you name it you can go on then you might have to be subscribing to something else before mm. you know it you've racked up a huge monthly subscription bill and actually think well, how much time do I actually spend watching their content? And yeah. I, you know, I, I, and I think actually, I, I'm saying that that's a personal feeling. Right. You know, I, um, when do I, you know, I obviously I watch a bit of sport, so yes, I get all that and uh, watch a few other things. But actually, having the time, and you think at the end of the day, do I need to spend that money? Mm. But of course, a lot of people see that as their entertainment. It's probably cheaper than going out, and that's the way they want to live. But for Harry and Meghan. They have to find a way to engage and make themselves feel relevant. And at the moment, they're not. Well, the good news for everybody out there who's missing a podcast is that the Independent Republic of Mike Graham daily podcast is out. Um, and not only that, every single day, uh, you get a bonus half hour with Peter Hitchens on a Monday, a bonus half hour with Rod Little on a Thursday. And guess how much it costs? Nothing. It's free. Well, Mike, you're such a generous individual. But we're, st sure. we're still in negotiations about how much I'm getting paid for it. Oh, I knew there was a catch somewhere, but I <laughs> never knew, you know, uh, you know that there will always be a little negotiation going on. But I'm, I'm so pleased that your pro podcast is doing well. But it is Thank proving you. over nine it, million, uh, nine million downloads now. Well, Mike, Mike, uh, how, how can you cope? Listen, uh, I can offer my services to Harry and Meghan and show them how to do it if you like. Well, I, I think what they need to do is actually not make it about themselves and actually want to say, right, let's find yeah. out about the people we're talking about. And actually, that might be more engaging mm. because, you know, if they're interested in other people other than themselves, then that just might be a way of them thinking, right, 
this is we can draw people back to supporting us because mm. it's not about us anymore. Exactly. Any thoughts about the Ashes? It gets underway at Edgbaston today. Um, well, I'm I'm, I'm going to not. If you don't mind, I may just be distracted by the Ashes today rather than another two and a quarter hours of your program. That's um, fine. I, you can I'm just leave the Ashes on without the sound. It's fine. Uh, well, you know, I will be looking forward to the Ashes series. I've also been keeping an eye on the US Open, and mm. I've got Royal Ascot next week. So. Um, at the moment, and, and I sometimes I've got to go and mow my lawn, so life's a bit hectic, but I haven't mm. got time to listen my to a Megan bleeds. and Harry podcast. My heart bleeds for you. Well, at least you're not as bad as Prince Andrew. He doesn't want to go out of the house in case he gets locked out. I mean, I presume your domestic situation isn't quite as bad as that. Um, well, uh, no, it's not. It's, it's happened I think before, I'm all right. isn't it? All right. <laughs> Good to see you. Have a great weekend, Rupert. Thank you very much indeed. Rupert Bell. The Ashes gets underway today, uh, of course, uh, up at Edgbaston, uh, England versus Australia. The 73rd edition of the competition uh, will run for most of the summer. Uh, Talk Sport, of course, will have it for you uh, everywhere you look and everywhere you go.